a new home for a while. Let me feel alive. Nothing to hold me back. Take my time. Just enjoy the ride. A new man passing by. Life is good. Best I've ever felt. But how did you sleep last night, Rufus? Oh well, we left Mandurah yesterday morning and um, we're heading towards Wave Rock, which is west of Perth, about three or four hundred k's west of Perth. So instead of coming up through, um, back up to Perth from Mandurah and then turning right, heading east to um, Wave Rock, we come up the back way, sort of went south a little, what, about 20 k's and then come up through the back and it was a beautiful drive through there. They said it was really nice, hilly, oh, big, Stands of forest. Um, I'm just trying to think of the name of the tree. Jarrah? I think it's Jarrah. Um, big stands of it. Beautiful timber through there. Nice hills, nice scenery. Heaps of sheep. Thousands and thousands of sheep, which really surprised me. And anyway, we're at a, um, an overnighter free camp at uh, Corrington. Corrington? Corrigent. Corrigent. And um, we yeah, stayed here last night. Nice little camp. There's only a couple of other people here. There's us in the motorhome over the back there. And a lady pulled up with a rooftop tent last night and she's, she's already gone. Yeah, we, we, we don't get into Wave Rock till lunchtime. 12 o'clock, I think, check-in is. So we've got to hang around here. We've got a few things to do. Um, on the way in, we passed the dog cemetery. And they looked pretty cool. We just read a little bit of history about it. And they had, this is where they had the dog in the ute contest or gathering. Everyone brings their dogs out, and they stayed had thousands of people here a couple of years ago, apparently. And um, yeah, so I'll go out and look at the dog cemetery. I reckon Chris will have a tear, the way she is. And then there's a five kilometre wildflower drive. So we're going to um, go out and check that out with the caravan on. So it's a dirt road, good gravel road, they reckon. So if Chris, I said to Chris, you get me lost, and I've got to reverse 200 metres down a dead end road, I said, there'll be trouble. But there, this is a great little camp, dump point. Toilets, clean toilets. The lady was just here cleaning them before. Um, yeah, there's a hose there. I don't know if there's a water tap here anywhere. There could be. But yeah, no, good little camp. Good for an overnight. It wasn't noisy. Had the diesel heater going last night and then turned it back on again this morning because, yeah, it's about six degrees. I reckon about it feels like 1.1, it said on the weather report. Oh, well, this is the uh, Corrigan we stayed at last night. I think I said Corrington and me. Did a spill before. Yes, yeah, uh, Corrigan. That was the rest area. Yeah. That's the uh, dog cemetery. Awesome. Bloody awesome. There's a lot of here, a lot of greys. People bring their dogs at miles to um, bring them out here. Tells you a bit about how it started. Oh, that was a dog, dog in the Ute world record in 1998. 699 vehicles. Yeah, I'll probably pause that so you can have a read of that anyway. I see if it'll work. Yeah, just have a quick wander in here. Jesus, it's cold, I tell you. Bloody freezing out here. Wind blows right through you. Chrissy. Chris is trying to add a new gimbal yeah. for a phone. She can't remember how to operate it, just takes practice. Um, that must be the new land. The farmer next door donated a bit of land for them, extended, so I guess that's a bit there. So this is the one that started it, Dale, this guy. 
This is a bloke's dog that started the whole thing. Paddy's best mate, Strike. I was just reading on the board. Oh, it's so cold. This is so good. Yeah, you get attached to your animals. How were you, Rufus? Fault bugger. <laughs> oh well, we arrived at Wave Rock Caravan Park yesterday afternoon. Not a bad little park. And um, we're just out for a small uh, walk this morning to um, Wave Rock. It's just right at the caravan park. So we're heading around first. We're going, it's a 1.4 kilometre loop. So we're heading around first to the Hippo's Yawn. And then we'll come back around, right around to um, the Wave Rock, the Wave itself. So yeah, no, it's pretty good. It's bloody cold, but isn't it? Oh, freezing. <laughs> yeah, at least there's no wind and we've got blue sky today. Unreal. Anyway, we'll poke along here and see what we can see. There's a few things to see around here. We're doing this this morning and then Chris is doing the washing as well. So we'll get back and we'll hang the washing up. One more load, she's got the hang up. And um, there we'll go for a drive. There's a few things to see in the drive at the Lake Grace and um, oh there's that salt lake too, I wonder where that is, we've got to find out where that is. And these, oh, you've seen somebody up on top of the rock, there must be a way to get up. I don't think I'd be going to climb up there, I'd slip past over to it. Hey, Rufus is on a mission to pee on every post, rock, leaf, all the way along here. Chris is getting a bit angry with him. Beautiful morning for a walk, but oh no, we go up the rock. Cool. Do a bit of mountain climbing here. Okay, up there. There's no signs that says no dogs. Looks like Chrissy's on a mission to get up here. You are here. A view from the top. <coughs> hey. And a good pair of boots. Oh, we're just coming into the hippo's yawn.
Oh, well, back to where we started from now. We've done the loop. A nice little walk. And this is the wave rock. The wave in the rock. Pretty cool. Rufus is still peeing on an heavy post. Good colours. Look out, Dale, it's a tsunami. <laughs> it's pretty cool. They're good those stripes aren't they? Those white stripes. Very picturesque. That's all because of erosion. Apparently all the base material eroded away and left that. That's what forms it, all the soft stuff down the bottom, apparently. Very nice. viewing platform. Oh, better view from up there. Oh, you can see those rock concrete um, walls up the top that catch the water and direct it down the other side there. There must have been a pond there or something that it went into. I didn't see any remains of it or anything on their walk. We went right to the end of that wall. Very good. We just um, we just come into the Wave Rock Resort for a drive. There's a few people staying here, and yeah, there's Lake Magic over out through there. It's just a big lake they call it. And this place here, it's where you come. Therapeutic. It's supposed to be as salty as the Dead Sea, and you can yeah, you basically can't sink in it. Like they say, you just float. Me and Christian took a vote and we were decided to throw Rufus in to see if he sunk, but yeah, he wasn't really on the idea. Christian wouldn't go in, so we had to go up, she wanted to know if I was heated. And there's no way there would lobby going in. But yeah, no, it's a nice colour. Lots of people come swimming here, I guess, from the resort on, in the summer. Yeah, it's supposed to be therapeutic with the, all the salts and everything that's in it. They got all these little change sets here, but the resort's a bit run down. There's a few people staying here, but I'd say it'd be more popular in the summer. I've had a fit. <laughs> I thought you'd get out for a look, Dale. You didn't have much of a look, you got back in the car. A bit cold? Oh, it's freezing out there. Yeah, you're lucky, Rufy. You were stayed in here and it's nice and warm. That was good, doesn't it? Oh, it's beautiful. I was just saying it'd be really nice in summer here. Oh my god, I could just imagine, eh? Mm, people in there swimming. Just another couple of miles. Yep. Well, we're just coming up to have a look at this cave, Malka's Cave. Uh, we're at the uh, Humps Nature Reserve. And um, yeah, there's a cave up here, a bit of an Aboriginal story with it. This guy, he was born cross-eyed, Aboriginal, but this is legend, born cross-eyed and he was no good at hunting because he couldn't throw a spear to hit it, I think. And so he took to eating little kids. 
so they um, hunted him off and he lived in this cave up here I can't remember the rest of the story but yeah that's what happened to him so Malka 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 cave and I don't know why they call it the humps because apparently this humps reserve there's a big walking trail up to the top and everything it's about one and a half k's but I don't think we're doing that I hope not anyway because I want to go to this bakery we we're supposed to go to the bakery before but then we seen this and we thought oh, we'll come out here for a look it's about 20 k's out from town oh. one of the Chrissy Karen roofers across here the legend of Malka there we go we'll have a look here we'll get the right story now Is an illegitimate son of a woman who fell in love with a man to whom marriage was forbidden. As a result, Malka was born with cross eyes, even though he grew up to be an outstanding, strong man of colossal height. His cross eyes prevented him from aiming a spear accurately and becoming a successful hunter. Out of frustration, Malka turned to catching and eating human children, and he became the terror of the district. He lived in Malka's cave where the impressions of his hands can still be seen much higher than those of an ordinary man. His mother became increasingly concerned with Malka, and when she scolded him for his antisocial behaviour, he turned on his own mother and killed her. This disgraced him even more, and he fled the cave, heading south. Aboriginal people were outraged by Malka's behaviour and set out to track him, track down the man who had flouted all the rules. They finally caught him near Dumbalang, Dumble Young, 156 k's southwest of Hayden. Because he did not deserve a proper ritual burial, they left his body for the ants. A grim warning to those who break the law. So that might that's coming out like it's a true story. I don't know. So it had to be just a story, I think. Yeah, we can't see when we get into the cave. Oh, these are all the pictures of the handprints up there. Up the main chamber. Oh, we can't see if we can see these. You see the handprint style? It's funny you're brave enough to go walking in there. <laughs> Is it scary? No. Did you carry roofers up that ramp, did you? Yeah. Oh, you're just cool, you can stand up in it. So over there, there's like some sort of animals on the back of it, like a dog. Oh, up the back there? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if we'll be able to see anything with this camera. And then if you go further in, you can see the handprints on the ceiling. Oh, yeah. So you just go up there and yeah. go to your left a bit and you can see the handprints. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, it's dark in here. Oh, on this wall, there's more handprints. Oh, but yeah. I think those animals that they've put up there on the wall are fantastic. Oh, that looks like a dinosaur. It does. <laughs> or a big lizard, maybe. Yeah. So, apparently, there are Malka's handprints up there. The way the story's written, you read the thing back there, the way the story's written, it's like it's true. It's, yeah. Yeah, not, not, um, not legend. No. It's amazing. That'd be a good little hideout in here. In the, when it's raining, it wouldn't be getting wet. I wonder where he slept. Well, you have a bit of water coming down that hill. <laughs> you wouldn't want to be in there. Oh well, well, that's Malka's cave. So this is the inquiry trail. Nick's gone back to the car. And wow.
disturb the kangaroo. Oh, Chrissy kept on walking, I turned around and came back. It's sort of like a big loop. I went up in the bush up in there before and I thought I could see another cave. There was just big boulders and everything. And then I walked on there and I frightened that kangaroo. So he took off, disturbed his meal. He's up there having a munch. So I'm still on the Kalari Trail. And I think this is what they call the rock the two pumps. Roof is scratching away. Uh, well, we left um, Wave Rock this morning. We're on our way to um, Kalgoorlie. We've got three nights before we get there. We're going to just stay at a free camp. And we just come along, and there's a kilometre of buddy shoes hanging on a fence. I don't know what the story is. I'll just poke along slow and um, show you. Oop, I'll put it in dry first and I'll go. They've even got a um, place. I said to Chris, I'm sure I'd get a pair of boots out of that. I don't know if you'd be able to see it. This is only, well, we've already driven through about three quarters of it, haven't we? We've done about three or four hundred metres. Look at them all. Oh, just one of those iconic Australian things we do. I might start a walk on the Oh no, that's the end of it by the looks of it. But yeah, no, there was miles of it. I don't know exactly how far. What do you reckon, 500 metres? Further than that? Yeah. Anyway, well, um, I'll flick you back on when we get to a free camp. We're not too sure which one we're staying at. We're about uh, 15 kilometres out of Narrabeen. Another chilly morning. We spent the night at uh, free camp. It was Meriden Peak Free Camp, good little spot. No amenities or anything, but it's um, yeah, you got to be fully self-contained, nothing on the ground. So good little camp. And this is the um, the dam. I think they use it similar to Wave Rock, where they um, direct the water off the rock down into a storage area, and they use this in the late 1800s and into the. Oh, in the 1960s, I guess, for um, steam trains, for water, for the steam trains. And now they just use it for um, for um, towns, the lawns, and the ovals in the town. So it's good to get news. Yeah, we're camped over the back there, over out through the thing. Well, I'll show you when we get around there. We're going to climb up the rock and have a look. But you might be able to see the rock through there. You can see the caravans. Yeah, it's another cool morning, it's chill, chilly breeze. But, yeah, we had the diesel heater pumping away this morning. So anyway, I'll throw you back home when we get to the top of the rock. Yeah, good little camp, Meriden Peak Free Camp, 24 hour. Yeah, that's all the caravans parked in here. There's a few got in here last night. Yeah, where are we at? We're parked up the dead end street. Oh, yeah, just say it through there. So I've got to try to reverse out of later. <laughs> yeah, got the director, got the navigator beside me. Yeah, I didn't reverse and I just drove in. Yeah, we're at the other end of the dam now. Beautiful morning. No, no clouds, no wind. It's supposed to be some more rain coming. But we've got two more nights on the road. We worked it out, we'll just... I can't remember the name of the other camp we're staying at. It's a bloody big long name, Aboriginal name. We're staying there tonight. It's only like 200, and, 200 odd k's away, so nice number of life street. Then we're going to go into um, Coolgardie. Oh, yeah, here's the 
where they direct the water down. Oh yeah, there's a little bridge there. So the water comes off the rock, which is up there, and funnels its way down into here. And fills the dam up. And then they pump it out into the train. So I wonder where the train track is. It has to be pretty close. Yeah, we did hear the train. Last night we heard it come through. Yeah, anyway, we'll head up here. Uh, he, I was, he's not a freaking cow, is he? <laughs> Part cheap. Oh, it was really funny when we were driving along. We've seen it at a few places, haven't we? Yeah. Although, like thousands, so many sheep. I've never seen any. Oh, just wheat, wheat, canola, and sheep. Mm -hmm. Stacks of it. And really beautiful country for wheat. I've never seen so much wheat growing. Like, it's. Chris did look at how much they grew, didn't they, in tonnage? Yeah, no, it's a, there was a massive amount they grow here. Anyway, yeah, we're all getting back to the sheep. Big paddocks of sheep, and there's a llama. They have llamas in them, of a llama or alpacas. Like the big, long neck thick and things they are that spit at you. <laughs> They're big. Anyway, they have one of them in the paddock, and I'm pretty sure they use them for looking after the sheep. Mm. They for probably for um, dogs and stuff like Foxes. that. Foxes. Foxes. I don't, yeah, so I was meant to Google why they have them in the paddock, but we've seen a couple of paddocks full of them, with a couple of those llamas in with them. Are you hungry, Rufus? Do you need breakfast? You won't need any of my cornflakes today. He's, been, he's got the habit of pinching me cornflakes now. I've got to feed him cornflakes. He couldn't eat the curry last night. Chris made a good curry out of the rest of the uh, roast we had the other day. It was beautiful. Anyway, we'll walk up this hill. Oh, so this is where they had the gate to um, block it off. So what, was, what did it say? Oh, it was flooding the... the Oh, if the dam got too full and flooded the town, they'd drop a gate down in here. No gate there now. That's the channel right back through the end of the dam. And this is where they directed the water. The water flows off the rock. And down under these concrete walls. Hey. Yeah, and gets directed into the, they call it the sleuth. Now yeah. to walk up this hill. Oh well, we ended up coming right to the very top. That wasn't in my plan. We went to a lady with a couple of dogs, taking them for a walk, and she's telling us about you can come up here. So I wonder what was up here. They had a shelter or something. Like a concrete base around it. That's the town of Meriden. Out through there. Oh, okay. It's for the town, was it? Okay then. It's interesting. So I wonder how they got the water up here. They wanted to pump it up. Oh, okay. Oh well, we're at Kalgoorlie now. Arrived here a couple of days ago in a in a caravan park. We thought we'd just come for a drive up to the super pit. And I wonder why they called the super pit. I forget how much gold they pull out here a year. It's like, can you remember how much gold they pull out here a year, Chris? 800,000 ounces. 800,000 ounces? Wow, holy Jesus, look at that down there. Jesus, that's a deep hole, isn't it? That is crazy. Yeah, they got the dump trucks over there. They do a blow, a blast here twice a day when the weather's right and everything. At one at um, one o'clock and five o'clock, I think they blast. Just the shells. It's 
600 metres deep, wasn't it, I think? And 3.5 kilometres wide. Yeah, 3.5 long, was it? No, wide. Wide and... Yeah, the length. Yeah, you wouldn't want to go over the side, would you? No. She's a long way down. Oh, well, we'll go up here for a look. Oh, this is a bloody digger bucket and a half, isn't it? I wonder how many yards this is. It's massive. Oh, keep wandering around. It's one big hole. 